Hey friends, I hope you're having a fantastic day today. I'm so happy you're here with me. I'm gonna paint daisies, but the thing is, I've got a few daisy painting videos on this YouTube channel, on my YouTube channel. <laughs> the thing is, I'm gonna try and get kind of a light pinky pastel sky. I've not done that before, so I think that'll be fun. I'm gonna use primary colors, and they're all Liquitex, so Cad Yellow Medium Hue, Oh, this one is Mars Black, Thalo Blue, Quinacridone Magenta, and which weighs up? Titanium White. Okay, let's have some fun, guys. Let's chat about what I've got going on. So I've got the primary colors, quinacridone magenta, cad yellow medium hue, thalo blue. So those are the, um, some people think of red, yellow, blue. I like quinacridone because it makes pretty reds. I can mix a red and then I have a really nice pink. Um, you could use other blues. You know, use what you want. Don't You don't have to go out and buy these colors. And play with it. You might you might like an ultramarine blue red shade much better than a thalo blue. Uh, Mars black and titanium white. And so then I mixed. So this is a lot of white, a little thalo blue, and just a little yellow. So it makes kind of an aqua color. I don't know how it's going to look on video. And a, a little bit of the canvas is coming through. So it weren't. Oh look at my finger. When I was drying it with a hair dryer, I kind of smoothed it out. <laughs> Um, a little bit of can canvas, not canvas, oh, cradled wood panels coming through. You can't really see it, but it's a little warmer, which I like. And then I'm, you know, little magenta, quite a bit of white to make a pink. And then I put just a little bit of its complement, this minty color in it to mute it down. But it looks quite pink um, on the, I want to call it the canvas, on the wood panel. But that's okay. I just didn't want it really pink. And then I mixed a purple with quite a bit of quinacridone, a little bit of thalo blue. And all I'm thinking is I'll probably have a daisy pretty close. So I'm thinking a high skyline. Kind of goes like that. And then I'll probably have a daisy up here high and then come down a little bit. And then maybe have one more up, not quite as high, that kind of thing. And then I'm, I'm thinking about keeping you in the painting. So like this brush stroke goes like this and these kind of go like this. Maybe even have a kind of a triangle shape of daisies here. I'm not sure yet. And then just varying the colors. So th since this is purple, I've got dark green over here. Oh, and then to make the green, I use cad yellow and a little Mars black. This one has a little bit of thalo blue in it and more Mars black. And I might start a new palette uh, just so I have more room. I don't know. We'll see. But I'm going to quit for tonight and let it dry. I think it's it looks really pretty when I look at my phone. And I'll be back tomorrow. <music> Mm-hmm. 
Hey friends, I thought I'd pop in. It's a couple days later. I've mixed, let's see, where should we start? I mixed a brown, so basically I, I used a quinacridone and some orange or some yellow and some black and just mix a brown until I like it. I mixed more greens, so they're similar. And then I mixed an orange, so quite a bit of yellow and just a little bit of quinacridone. Oh, and then I put some white and yellow because that, that's what I put on first for the centers of the daisies to help cover the background. So I started with that one, put, it on, put on some yellow, kind of put on some brown, orange, and played with a brownish, orangish quinacridone. And I'm using, um, I don't know what, it's been, too, it's been a couple days if I just said that, sorry. I was using this just because it was handy. A 3 8 angle brush from Royal and Langnickel. And then I wanted a little bit more control, so I went down to a quarter inch flat brush from Royal and Langnickel. Um, I did use a little number two round because I'm gonna put a little, yeah, there you can see it, a l one little daisy on that side and an even smaller daisy on this side. <laughs> this makes me chuckle. And so I'm going to start putting in some of the um, petals and see how full it looks. I kind of like the shape. I do have, I don't know, right now it's bugging me that there's not much right here, but I, I do kind of like the shape I've got going. And a lot of times I'll have everything kind of leaning in. This time I have a stroke kind of going this way and a stroke going this way, but most of these daisies, that one's looking, this one looks that direction. I, I did a little bit, but I have more just kind of looking up this time. Oh, and I may, if I haven't said, I may use this number 12 flat brush from Royal and Lanical. It's their Zen line. I'm pretty sure it's a half inch. This one says number 12 on it. Okay, guys, I thought I'd just pop in with what I was up to. I guess the, the tip here would be if you want to cover the background. Um, my yellow is transparent. It depends on your yellow. It says it's semi-transparent. The box right there is half full. So I um, mixed yellow and white for better coverage. And then layers. Putting on a couple coats helps too. Okay, guys, I'll be back in a bit. Hey, with the time lapse, it wasn't that much time at all, but I thought I'd pop in with what I'm thinking. So my light is pretty much from the top, um, kind of top left. This center is somewhere right here. And so I'm, you know, I mixed a uh, phthalo blue and white, put some brown in it, just to kind of, I'm painting the darkest petals. I have more brown up here is what I'm thinking cooler down here. There's some brown there and there. So actually, maybe I want to kind of wipe off my brush. Let's just use some of this blue. And then I'm trying to paint looser, just to challenge myself. Now those are kind of lined up. Maybe let's make that one a little bigger and longer. Um, I don't know if I like that. So what I do is just kind of swipe at it or zigzag at it. I'll come back. That wasn't any darker. Ooh, actually a little purple could be pretty. All right, let's stick with the blue. And I kind of figure out, I think that one is behind this one. So what do we want to do? We want it to go down. I think I kind of want to fill this space. And then sometimes I'll just kind of zigzag and mush. And there you basically have a, a daisy. You could put a little, sometimes it's better if you leave it alone and I always mess with it. 
Oh, actually, I kind of like that. A little not attached petal. And then let's take some of our sky color, which is right here. And we'll put this one in. I've got some brown here. And I may have to come back and fix. It's a pretty dry brush. I should just leave that. And then I'm going to come with my muddy mess. Maybe kind of transition that brown a little bit better. Or more to my liking. I don't know that it's better. That needs to come up. And then, so what I do, well, here, let's do this one. Let's see. Maybe we want to go back to the blue. I'm just kind of cleaning my brush off on a paper towel. It's not super clean. Go back to this blue. Um, I start doing the same things too. I try not to. It's kind of fun. Just go for it. Try not to think too much. So I'm liking that better because it fills in with all the petals. And I'm off to the right. I don't recommend painting like that, but I also kind of probably should take a photo and see what I think. See if we need to add more. And then what you do is you, whoops, I definitely need some white. You know, another, whoop, another palette would be easier because I've running out of room or even a, you probably have a bigger palette in your studio. I do like these because I could stick them in a gallon baggie. Spray them. I have, just get a fine mist sprayer. I wash this out. It's a uh, micro fine setting mist, but I really like, so I'll spray it. Put another plate on top to protect the paint and then slide it into a gallon baggie. Makes it like a little terrarium. You can kind of wake up your paint sometimes that way. Sometimes you just have to put out fresh. Okay, so what we could do for fun, I'm gonna see how clean my brush is here, is let's put, now let's, I always wanna put it like everywhere because I like it and then it doesn't, it's better if you don't, or it can be better you don't put in as much straight up white. So we'd have one maybe there. So that's one thing nice about having that sun's kind of off camera. Just something to remind you. You could put a piece of tape where your sun is so you can kind of look at the angle. Yeah, I'm already probably putting in too much. <laughs> but it's fun. And I like the contrast. And then you don't have to do the full stroke. You can just do part of the petal. Let's pull, really pull this one up. Maybe. And if I mess it up, I can go back dark again. Maybe, you can tell I'm thinking. This is the speed I paint. Oh, maybe this one. I need to, I can tell I need to stop. Okay. And then what I think I'll do, I don't want to do the sky color up here. I'll stick with browns because I've got the sky color. Um, or like maybe a bunch of white in this greenish, whatever color that is, but it's not white, white. 
don't know if you can see that. Oh, I've got white, white on my brush though. And I have water. I'm, I rinse out my brush and I never wipe the handles. All right, is that gonna come up in value? Move my sun a little bit. Oh, well, this is probably okay. We'll do that. Kind of swipe. Okay, guys, I'm just going to play with these some more and then I'll be back. Hey friends, I'm calling it done. I um, it's fun. There's a lot of like, there's a lot I like about it. When I'm this close to it, I don't know. It's so what I let, let's start here. What I usually do is have even more muted background. Um, that's a little bit brighter than I usually do, I think. And so it's, I don't know, it's just more intense or something. I don't know. You guys let me know in the comments what you think. Here, let's, let's also talk about this. So what I did is I used this three quarter inch flat brush from Royal and Lane Nickel. And it's thin. Some brushes have more bristles and some have fewer. And I like that it's thin because I, I loaded up with some, you know, water and some paint. I'm going to kind of dry this off a little bit. And then what I do is I set it down so it's skinny and then I push in and squish and twist a little and then go skinny again and you get kind of fun, a fun shape. Or I might just kind of swipe and then smear with my finger. And it just, it says like maybe a flower or something in the distance. Put some lines over it then it pushes it back too. the medium to darkish value pushes it back. Um, I kind of want to, I covered up that petal, but I really like, I really liked it. I don't know, but it's definitely much further back than this one. It was just such a nice value change in brush strokes. I like that one a lot. I brighten this one up, but a lot of times it'll dry darker, so I don't know if that is brighter. I'm kind of looking at my phone. Yeah, it comes forward. It's kind of like, a, I think, fried egg. It's like a fried egg. What else? I like the pink. Let me know if you like the pink. It's very, um, I want to say happy. It's vibrant. I, I always have trouble with my paintings when I finish them right away. I just, you know, I don't know what to think about them. I need to like walk away, go have a cup of tea and come back. I, this is really watery, not quite white paint. And then just kind of one color on that pushes. Oh, you know, it would push it back a little more too. We'll come with 
one of my greens. Just kind of load the end of my brush. Actually, one side more than the other I did. Let's. This would be better straight on, but I can't. My phone's in the way. Maybe bring this. I'll oh, see now I've got kind of two of the same. Make three. That, the grasses over the top push them back. I don't know if I like that or not. And then as I get more detail going, I get I start painting slower and slower and slower. You know, I'll I'll put this brownish. So this one, I think I used this brush for this stroke. Load my brush up, set it down. Yeah, squish a little bit, twist and lift. So you can practice those strokes on a piece of paper or, you know, a piece of, you can buy a canvas pad or something. And you just get better and better at them. You could, um, if you're interested in, you could take like a calligraphy class because a, a flat edge brush will do pretty much the same thing as, a, as calligraphy. Okay, I don't know if there's anything else. I have the whites more up here. Oh, I do like how I kind of have still have this shape going. It's just kind of a nice... Kind of mimic, mimics the background a little bit, not a lot. I painted the sides. Can't quite get it in. <laughs> in frame. I did paint the bottom. Bring I can't get quite uh, the camera's close. And then I did paint this side. See if we can get it in there. That muddy uh, quinacridone with the brown is really pretty. Okay, please let me know what you think. You can tell it's one of my daisy paintings. It has kind of the same flavor, the same handwriting. You guys will have your own handwriting, and that's awesome. You want that. I just love hanging out with you on um, the Annie Tro Art Friends Facebook group. No pressure to join. It's just really fun to see your work there. And I also love the comments here on YouTube. It means the world to me. Super appreciate your support. Great big happy art hugs, and I hope to chat with you soon. Bye, guys.